I've been up and working till the morning, yeah. The morning. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. They storming. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, like foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan like on my it's way. Broom, broom, tell him I'm my lane, I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me. All right, everyone, what is up? And welcome back to another video. My name is Jacob McDonald, and uh, I'm going to discuss a topic that I wouldn't normally discuss on this channel, but seeing as I've just competed, which I never really thought would happen again, but I have competed uh, on a bodybuilding stage this year in 2020, twice actually, and four times in total in my life. Um, I'm still a lifetime natural athlete. That means uh, drug free performance enhancing drug free. I do smoke marijuana and I, I'm open about that. So if you think I'm uh, not a natural athlete or a natural bodybuilder or a drug free drug free bodybuilder anymore because I smoke weed, well, well, I, I guess this is obsolete. <laughs> but basically, it's not because I'm talking about steroids today. I'm not talking about recreational drugs. I'm talking about steroids. Um, you know, which can be just as addictive. I'm, I'm led to believe. So, today's video, the title of this video, is how I almost began taking steroids, but never did. And there's a story to it. Um, there's a story that's, that's progressed as I get older. You know, I'm almost 30 now. I probably, you know, I'm going to begin this story thinking about seriously taking steroids when I was about 24. So, almost six years ago now. You know, I was 24. That wasn't early by any means. Um, but God, I mean, my knowledge, I didn't even know about steroids when I started. So thank God I, I had a little bit of naivety about me. And I saw guys in the gym that were huge and vascular and, and ripped. And I thought, well, well, I can get that eventually. I mean, if I train hard enough and eat well enough and do this for long enough and be consistent enough, I can get there. And that was my genuine attitude for the first six years of, of, of lifting, first five years of lifting. Whether that lifting was considered serious or, uh, you know, consistent by any means is, is, uh, is you know, is, um, I guess, questionable. But certainly my, my, my underlying attitude and, and opinion of any impressive physique that I saw, whether it be in the gym or on the street or on the internet, I firmly believed, you know, I guess it was, I guess it was a little bit of narcissism. It might have been on my part thinking that I can do anything and thinking that I'm the man, you know, and thinking that, fuck, if they look like that, I can do it one day. Not knowing and, you know, not, not having the, 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 the knowledge that a lot of these physiques, not all, okay, not all, because there are genetic outliers out there, but a lot of these physiques that are really impressive you know, have been built somewhat or are being maintained somewhat through the use of exogenous hormones such as testosterone and different different steroids. So I guess um, I guess it all started back when I was 24. I began um, becoming obsessed with my testosterone level. I began believing that I had a low testosterone level. I got a couple of tests done. My testosterone came back as normal, possibly on the lower side of normal. Definitely not on the higher side. Definitely not on the higher side. And I guess, I guess I was sort of hoping that either my test would be like off the charts low or off the charts high. And anything in the middle wasn't good enough for me. You know, I, I thought, I thought. I thought I want to get on testosterone. I want my testosterone level to be jacked up so I can start making some crazy gains and start looking like all these guys that are so impressive. That's how I felt. But I was still I was still really I was still holding on to the fact that I was a natural. I was still proud of that. And and um you know, in the early days I used to preach it. I used to preach it hard. In fact, I probably used to hate on steroid users. Um well not so much steroid users, the ones that hit it. You know, the fake natties. I began hating on but then at the end of the day that just fade it faded it faded with maturity it faded with age with time and I began um, you know taking on the opinion of well anyone can do anything you know you're entitled to your you know you're entitled to your own opinions on the subject you're entitled to do whatever the hell you want 
but I started forming opinions on steroids and on people um, and on, on, I guess, practices around taking steroids that I can then, you know, I guess, tell people about. Such, such things like, make sure you fucking train five years at least hard, heavy, in the gym, naturally, to see what your body can do. You know, to see what kind of genetics you've got. You know, if you were to go down the steroid route, start with a small dose of testosterone. No, not 500 milligrams. Fucking something like 250. Get blood work done before you start. Take 250 milligrams of test for, for 6 or 12 weeks and see what your fucking body does, mate. See what your body does physically and also with your blood work. I'm telling you, your, your testosterone will be jacked up. You will put on 10 pounds of muscle like that. It's crazy shit. And you don't need much. Anyways, guys, I'm coming to you as a lifetime natural. I still haven't taken anything. I'm not saying it's out of the question, but I haven't. And so there, there are safe ways to do it. I'm not completely against it. I do have this, this sort of, I guess, burning feeling in the back of my head sometimes that I'd love to, as a man, as a capable man, um, I'd love to, to feel, you know, that superhuman uh, feeling and strength and power at least once in my life but it hasn't happened yet anyways guys those feelings i had way back then and that's that's why i, I became inter not only interested but but uh tempted to go down that route so yeah i got my testosterone checked a couple of times i discussed it with the doctor um you know i was looking at getting trt i was looking at possibly getting a doctor's prescribed testosterone you know i was looking at you know Hopefully, my thoughts were, from these tests, my tests will come back low, I will be an eligible candidate for TRT. I was 24 years of age. 24. And I was willing, guys, that's the thing, okay, even TR, well, steroids, TRT, I wanted to do it through a doctor, okay, I wanted to do it, you know, right. Uh, I wanted to do my blood work properly. I wasn't ever going to buy my testosterone or steroid from the black market. So if I couldn't get a low testosterone level reading from the doctor, it wasn't going to happen. But I was 24, guys, and I was willing. I was willing. If it was slightly low, if that doctor agreed to put me on TRT, I was willing to do it. And I was willing to shut down my natural level for the rest of my life and be on an injection or a fucking a gel or something for the rest of my life, just so I can have a few more muscle gains. At age 24, guys, that is the kind of, <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's the kind of decision people make. And at the age 18, can you imagine the kind of decisions people make? So thank God I've made it to my late 20s. And, you know, I've seen it all. I've followed the YouTube fitness industry for fucking 10 years. I've, I've literally, I've seen it all. I've watched all the videos you guys have. And now I'm here to give you guys my own opinion. I've, I've been talking for 10 minutes. I don't know how the fuck I've done that. Anyways, guys, test level was fine. I, then I began looking into Psalms because I thought, nah, you know what? I, <laughs> well, this seems stupid now, but I thought, well, I'm not going to go and buy black market steroids. Let me go and buy black market pills. <laughs> I mean, you know, you started hearing of, of the... Uh, lesser side effects or no side effects you know steroid like results with no side effects and i was 25 at that point um still obviously looking into options to enhance my lifting um but possibly down a route that wasn't going to suppress me for my my entire life and that's when i started looking at psalms thank god i didn't take them man because people started you know making videos about how safe they were but then slowly but surely these videos started coming out about people who were suppressing their their um their testosterone level through just taking psalms and also through you know they were getting um testosterone based side effects only on psalms you know what i mean steroid based side effects on psalms and it's like well shit man that's dodgy that is dodgy and 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 i ne never ended up doing them i literally had a, an order from an enhanced athlete in the car ready to go two bottles i think it was 60 or 120 days worth of psalms and i did not click buy i didn't end up doing it so there you go no testosterone from the doctor and no psalms and so at the end of 2015 i decided man you know what i'm gonna forget about this shit for a while i'm just gonna 
keep doing my thing, keep being natural, probably not preach it as much because I felt, well, I mean, I'd, con I'd seriously consider going down that route, right? So I'm not going to be this guy that preaches natural bodybuilding as the only way because I know that it's not. So anyways, we move on. That was the end of 2015, got through 2016, began uh, a video series on this YouTube channel called, Make, called Making Gains, which covered me over a 365 day period, um, bulking up for nine of those months and then cutting down for, for three of them. So uh, please go back in my video library and, and check those out. That was basically the first time that I went real hard on YouTube, you know, really trying to put my, put effort into content and create a really decently sized video series for people to watch and so I think there was like 150 episodes so I went really hard and uh, I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot but you know at the end of that I wanted to compete again but I I still was dealing with um, my gyno so I <laughs> it's yeah funny funnily enough uh, you know I've never taken any steroids but I, I had gyno uh, came in through puberty as a lot of guys get it probably the age of 11 you know, I can't really remember before being 11 years of age having to worry about it. Or maybe that's just when people started teasing me about it. Like, honestly, I don't know. But I went through a lot of shit at, at, at uh, intermediate and high school because of it. And so it was always something I wanted to get sorted. Um, I did compete for the first time on a bodybuilding stage in 2015. I did get quite lean, but the gyno was still there. And it pissed me off. And I said to myself, you know... Whether I take steroids or not, I'm never getting back on a bodybuilding stage unless I get the surgery, unless I get the shit sorted. So it took me another two years to get that done. And at the end of 2017, I finally got my gynecomastia surgery. So the reason I bring up that is because another form of, not steroid, but drug that I was offered to try and uh, reduce my gyno without the need for surgery, which would never have worked because my gyno was not steroid induced. It came through puberty, okay. It was never gonna work. But I was asked if I wanted to take letrozole, which is a extremely powerful anti-estrogen. And I, once again, was so tempted. I was so tempted. I was like, fuck man, I don't wanna get the surgery. I wanna still say I'm natural, so to speak. But then I started thinking, you know what, I'm not gonna be able to say I'm natural. I'm not. I've taken something, and then I started looking at the side effects of taking letrozole. Like, fuck that shit. That stuff would have really fucked me up. Mentally. I would have started feeling like absolute shit, bro. And all these bodybuilders that take these strong anti-estrogens in the, the final part of their prep to, to, counter, to counteract the, the increase in things like trend and stuff, which will not only increase your test, but also increase your estrogen. So they cut that out completely with letrozole, something strong like letrozole, and and the way that people feel on that shit, I've, you know, I've, I've heard it's terrible, I've heard, you know, <laughs> yeah, we think that we only need testosterone as a man, but that's not true, so anyway, that was the third sort of inkling I had to, to take something um, that wasn't legal, uh, certainly not away from a doctor's prescription, so, you know, I was offered that and I decided, no, you know what, I'm not going to. I'm going to keep my gyno and I'm going to get through it. And then at the end of 2017, after knowing that, okay, I'm not going to take steroids because my test level's fine. I'm not going to take SARMs because they're too dodgy. And I'm not going to take letrozole because I'm going to have the surgery. I got the surgery. End of 2017, boom. A lot of you guys would have seen that surgery video series. In fact, if you haven't seen it, it was a fucking disaster. And... I'm literally sitting here, November the 10th, 2020, almost three years post-surgery, and it's still not perfect. And it probably never will be. But I'm glad I had it done. So, there you go. That was, that, that's, how, that's basically how I almost started taking steroids. Um, so, sadly, after that surgery, and ha having the, the recovery go so bad, I probably spent the, the next year, like, seriously, like, in and out of the gym. Like, the worst I'd been in the previous five years. Um, my consistency was shot. I lost motivation. I felt like I, you know, my chest was shit. This thing that I'd waited for for so long, you know, went like shit. And it really affected me. So, eventually, probably halfway through 2018, I, I did get back in the gym. And up until early 2020, so probably the next 18 months or so, it was really stop-start. 
really stopped starting the gym and um, and I, I suffered from some severe anxiety and depression. Now I'm not saying, I, I actually don't know exactly why that was, but I feel like a lot of it was my situation at the time, my environment. So I guess the fourth time that I decided, I, so I guess there's, there's more than three times, there's four times in total that I've actually considered taking steroids or, or getting them. And the fourth and final time was when I was really in my depth of, of depression due to my circumstances and my environment and I went to the doctor and I said I said I tried to convince the doctor that I was suffering all of the symptoms of low testosterone I'm 29 years of age or 28 years of age but I've got low T and this doctor didn't even give me a test this doctor fucking refused he said no I'm not going to give you a test to check your hormones and I was like what? I fucking come in here, I'm allowed to tell you exactly what I want. And he ended up honestly convincing me that it wasn't the low testosterone. He went through all of these signs and symptoms that I didn't have. And so I walked out of there thinking, man, you've probably done me a favor, mate. You're a real fucking champion. And so I went on, went on my merry way, you know, forgot about it again, forgot about my test level. Uh, depression still hung around but at the end of the day once I did change my environment once I did change my situation uh, the depression started to lift and so I, then I realized that I realized that uh, you know I've probably still got that medium to low range test testosterone level but it's not you don't need steroids Jacob you certainly don't and I proved that to myself this year because I jumped back on a bodybuilding stage in decent condition with a decent amount of muscle as a lifetime natural and I tell you what that meant a whole lot more to me than any show I would have ever done enhanced so guys if you are considering it for any of those reasons please take my advice I would say do what I say not what I do but in this one I'm gonna say do what I do what I do too because you know I'm still I'm proud to say I am proud to say I don't preach anymore but I am proud to say that I'm a lifetime natural and look I don't get asked very often at all if I take gear or if I have taken gear but on the one occasion every now and then when someone says look are you natural or not or you know do you know where I can get some some, some steroids or something like that in fact that never happens guys <laughs> that's a fucking straight up lie but some people have asked, you know, am I natural? And if that ever happens, I get the smile, I get the biggest smile I've ever had on my face, and I say, yes, I am. Thank you for asking. I'm going to take that as a massive, massive compliment. So I guess my goal moving forward as a lifetime natural is to start making people think that I'm on steroids. You know what I mean? Just through the way that I look. So I guess I'm just going to have to keep on keeping on, keep on training stay in shape the fastest way guys I'll leave you with this the fastest way the fastest and most foolproof way without any drugs to make yourself look like you've just put on 10 pounds of muscle is to lose 10 pounds of fat and with that being said I'll see you in the next one hope you've enjoyed the video guys a little bit of an insight into the way I think um, it's a touchy subject hopefully we'll bring in a few views if you have enjoyed the video or you've got something from it, please hit like. If you want to subscribe, that would be hugely appreciated. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.